we are covering all aspects of life. Um, so we're still here with Rob Nikosti, who's going to not only host the, plat the platform, um, actually, before we get into your other two shows, I do want to mention a spon our sponsors for tonight. Um, we have CXP Studios out of North Haven, um, KBW Designs out of Brantford, uh, which um, you'll see a, a commercial of theirs, uh, either if you've already seen it or you've seen it later. I'm not in the control room, so I'm not sure when it's played. Um, we also have Eagle Eye Entertainment out of North Haven. Uh, sports Plus out of North Haven, who designed these great sports line entertainment shirts. Thank you. And we have them for us. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope he's watching. Uh, Dr. J of Rent DJ is doing all of our music. Um, our opening, our opening theme song didn't get played tonight, but we're going to work on that for future shows. Um, and also some other music. He's, he actually put together a uh, theme song for the platform as well. Uh, Sophie Marie's Pizza out of Hamden. They provided us some nourishment for tonight. <laughs> Uh, and then New England Film Studios, right from right from where we're broadcasting from mm -hmm. in New Haven. We want to thank you to all those great sponsors for helping us out tonight. Um, and definitely all the links are on the website, uh, except for CXP and KBW, which, well, actually, KBW is on there, but CXP is not. I will put that on. Um, all right, so let's let's uh, get on to uh, Rob's other shows. Hey, uh, I was really interested. You're telling me a little bit about a program, kind of like a leadership circle, I think you were calling Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm passionate about leadership. I think that's the missing component in this world. And that's why we have so many misguided people and misguided situations because of lack of leadership. You know, even in homes that we spoke about earlier with the platform, being a kind of a, the platform being the foundation of that and the leadership circle kind of spinning off of that, trying to develop leaders, inspire people to they have gifts because the thing is leadership today is very elusive it's misunderstood a lot of people think that management is leadership or administration is leadership not realizing those are different talents or different right. gifts leadership is on a whole different platform than what they you know mark it out to be so when you take a manager and you put him in a leadership position he's going to give you what a manager will produce not what a leader will produce so therefore you can never take your you know, whatever program you have, company or whatever circumstance, you can never take it to the level it needs to go to. And I think that's interesting. I think we've all probably experienced that too in the workplace where you're in a situation where someone is in charge of a department or a division or, you know, the workplace and their skills are not necessarily the leadership skills, mm -hmm. but they're in that position. So we look to them for that and it becomes, you know, part of Part of what we expect of them, but that's not really what they're there for. So I think that's an interesting point. Yeah, absolutely. Leadership, I, I mean, you know, I'm not taking any words out of your mouth or what you were going to say, but I mean, I always thought the best managers that I've ever had in, in jobs are the ones that got right into the thick of things with you. That to me is leadership, not sitting up saying, oh, do this, do this, this. Then another manager comes around saying, do this, do this, do that. <laughs> and another one comes around, you know, it's that's mismanaging. That, that's yeah. managing. That's absolutely. not leadership. Absolutely. I've learned recently about leadership even more. Mm -hmm. I think managers, they figure out what the problem is, but they don't know how to solve the problem. Mm. Leaders are constantly learning. They're innovators. You know, they learn how to teach. They, don't, they learn how to train people. They learn how to equip people. They learn how to empower people. They also learn how to sign and designate what's good for you. Because what, what a leader will do is will take the best out of you and will make it flourish. You put me in the best situation possible and leaders will lead by example not that leaders are perfect right but what happened is if they make a mistake a leader will stand up and take ownership yeah that's and then you will see him develop from that and you will see changes you know so i think the manager will be more trying to let somebody else handle it you know or just let things kind of flow the way they're supposed to be or just trying to make things move along that would be more your manager and I go, that's, that will be a, a testament to any particular organization that wants to, you know, be foresight, you know, they, 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 if they want to have foresights or insights, mm -hmm. they wouldn't look towards the manager, they would be looking for leaders, but in today's world, it's hard to detect that unless you have those particular eyes to, to see that. Right, and you can't discern, you know, one from the other a lot of times because we just lump it together in our, in our minds, and um, I think that's really interesting the way you bring that out because even just the words, it, it, you know, you separate all the connotations that go with it, manage, have certain implications, lead, 
has certain implications Absolutely. too, and they're not necessarily the same thing. Absolutely. Um, and it sounds like your background is going to be a great asset to this and really makes sense with the programming because you said you had a background in psychology. Absolutely, yeah. And then also working, was it the team ministry that yeah. you said? Team ministry. Plus, I grew up with people mentoring me, so that was a natural transition for me to be a mentor to other people. I watch a lot of sports as well, and I can tell when a guy is uh, winning championship is because he's a leader. He's not trying to manage the team. And you can see the difference with the 49ers. Mm. That was a major switch there. Yes. Jim Harbaugh or, or John Harbaugh, one of those guys. <laughs> but he came into a team that, was, that he inherited from another uh, guy that was a leader before that, Mike Singletary. Yep. And Mike Singletary managed the guy's talent. But uh, Jim was able to come in and, and help those guys flourish. Well, and that's a really interesting point, too, because well, and it's with Jim with the uh, 49ers and then John, John's brother with the, was with, with the, the Ravens, Ravens. Mm -hmm. or is with the Ravens. But Singletary, to my recollection of what he was playing, was considered a leader on the field. So it's interesting that it's a different skill set for him to then switch over, not only just to be a coach, but his style of leadership sounds like it potentially changed even in that transition. Yeah. Well, what happened is sometimes you can lead yourself and maybe you can lead one other person, but to lead a group of team and different talents mm -hmm. and different personalities is a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And that's why you get into their life. Like Terry, I refer to Terry a lot because Terry was not formal. He didn't come from a formal education, but he knew everybody's personality and character. And he knew how to bring out the best of you. You know, he knows that if you're a tough mental kid, he can yell at you and, and make certain kind of gesture towards you and you can be motivated. But he also know if you're kind of a soft, laid back individual, he has to rub you in the back a little bit more. So it was a different approach that he had and he was able to master every single aspect of it where he can bring out the best. Because everything I've learned from him, I've practiced it until this day. I don't want to run out of time on this, but you mentioned when we were talking prior to the show, uh, Men of Steel program, and I thought that was really fascinating, and I love the acronym. Yeah, that's an uh, approach that I wanted to take with just developing solid leadership and really making a distinction between managers, administrators, and leaders. Do you mind, do you mind if I hit the, uh, the acronym there for yes. this? Um, the STEEL, so it was S-T-E-E-L, and we've got student, yep. train, correct train, me if I'm yep. off on any of these two, equip, empower, and leader. Yeah. And I think that's a great acronym for Absolutely. men of steel, uh, you know, being men of fortitude, strong, and having all these components. Because a lot of times we'll think of strength. Well, we forget that there's training and there's equipping and there's, you know, you've got to be a student. You've got to be willing to learn to really become that kind Absolutely. of leader. You've got to constantly be a learner. I, I heard this quote a long time ago from uh, Jim Rowan. He said, never be lazy in learning because learning is a segue for a lot of things. You innovate. And learning. You can learn from observing people. You can learn intellectually by reading, or you can learn by self-approving. You understand your weaknesses, you make connections to certain things, and you discover what kind of path you can take. But you got to be honest and you got to be committed for the most part, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's got to be a consistent thing that you do. It can't be something that's a flyby, but you got to be consistent, you know? you got to be on a daily basis with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And eventually you get there, but the biggest thing about it I see is you got to be really patient with yourself. you got to really be patient with yourself. So talking about uh, student and uh, training and all this, we're going to segue into the next show that you're going to be doing, and that's the Teacher's Corner. Yeah. So tell us a little about Teacher's Corner. The Teacher's Corner is something that... Coming together. Tom. Yeah, what I want to get is many people involved with the, with the shows. The Teacher's Corner is going to serve as an opportunity for people to, to come on and, and help train, just kind of like uh, Redeem was speaking earlier, uh, how to empower people spiritually. You know, the thing about I realize about empowerment is if you give somebody a task and they don't embrace it, <laughs> they're not empowered. <laughs> you know, it's not until they embrace it and they become empowered. So there's a lot of people that don't know how to read the scriptures. Some people don't understand how to interpret the scriptures. Now you can refer them to a bunch of books or you can sit hand in hand with them and give them perspective and you can teach them along the way until they develop their own personality and character and they can go ahead and do it on their own. But everybody needs a, you know, somebody to walk with them. You know, from the beginning, Adam and Eve. Right. Got to walk with them. Mm -hmm. You know, and taught them a few things and the choices that they make was on their, on their, on their own choices. But 
today I wanted to just talk about how we can bring a lot of different people in. There's a lot of people that's a lot more wiser than I am. I don't want to hog up the whole floor, but there's going to be a lot of people that I'm going to give opportunity to to be able to share some of the, you know, critical aspect of training that they've done over the years that's gotten to a certain point. How they study their scriptures and what kind of books they use and how to self-train. So there's a, there's a lot of people that's going to be involved where I can basically say, you know, this is not isolated wisdom. This is wisdom abroad. It's expanded. So whoever you can relate to, you can go to that person and, and learn how to do it. You know, for me, I spread out four or five different books, you know, three or four different Bibles and, you know, um, concordance and commentaries, and I just go at it, you know, and I pick at least four hours a week to do something like that where I can do in-depth study. Mm. But along the way, I, I take little bits and pieces of it, you know. Uh, one time a friend of mine asked me a question, he said, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> you know, well, you cook it, <laughs> and then you eat it. Well, he said, you eat it one bite at a time. So when you look at the Bible, it's so vast, and what I've learned today, 10 years from now, it will be something totally different because my life will be in a different place. So i got to be able to be in a position where I can eat a little bit at a time, and it would help me basically learn how to digest and learn how to flourish from it as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, well, one thing that I was thinking between each of our guests tonight is just building that consistency and, and really developing your skills over time, whether it be leadership or whether it be, you know, convictions from the word, like we were talking about with Redeemed earlier, or Nikki talking about training, mm -hmm. you know, that, that it's got to be something you develop that consistency and continue to go at. And I know we didn't have a guest on, but the same thing for football. So, you know, I mean, it's Sportswire Entertainment. We're covering the range here. But there's always connections and there's always parallels and you're talking about the lessons you learn from basketball and I think anyone who's played in organized sport, especially in school or on a team like that, there's so many lessons you can take away from it mm -hmm. um, that it's life, you know, it's how do we apply these things to life and, and hopefully that's what we're helping you do tonight and hopefully that's something uh, you'll continue to join us and we can be uh, involved in that with, with you as well. Absolutely and I, I think it's uh, I think it's great just going over how to empower people and, and, and especially you know at the beginning talking over uh, talking over our you know um, at the beginning of this interview talking over the teams and, and what needs to happen because that you know like I said our kids are our next generation you right. saw my son up here earlier singing the national anthem mm -hmm. you know and that's one of his talents that you know he's got the talent to sing I don't have it <laughs> I could barely do karaoke for country because that's the only genre of music that sounds good when you're when you're when you don't have to tell them. But um, the thing is, is you need to empower the children. So you know, whether it be inner city basketball, whether it be anything, you got to create shows. Yeah. And, and you know, one thing I'll add to that would be, you got to love it, mm -hmm. and you got to have a passion for it, or else it's going to dwindle away, and it's going to be just another thing that's a flyby. Right. But you got to have a passion for it. You got to love it. That's where it starts. Yeah. Well, Rob, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is a great pleasure. All right. And um, all the information for the platform and the Teacher's Corner and the Leadership Circle will be on Sports Wine Entertainment's website. In the near future, we're going to take our final break, and then we'll be back to wrap things up. Stay tuned. Everybody get set! Studios, stylish models come together with creative photographers and videographers to produce cutting-edge media for portfolios, magazine ads, and video, including movies, TV commercials, and web content. Many unique sets make this studio a dream to work in. The dressing and makeup room is close to all sets. Use your own or our available lighting sets. 
There's also plenty of available window light for that perfect natural light look. Our wide variety of locations, including our spacious main room, allows for many options and gives you the best chance.